Well, since this guy looks like he's from the post-disaster timeline and has a crescent moon in the back, this guy should not be called the Moon Gundam. It should be called the Mikatsuki Gundam. Yeah, is it just me? Okay, bad joke. Fine, move on. What is going on guys, MG2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high-grade Moon Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam Moon. So, well, I actually like how they made this guy. I never really know that he is just basically a Xeon mobile suit with a Gundam head because, well, I do not have any prior knowledge to any new, like, Universal Century stuff because, yeah, as I did say multiple times over, I'm not a fan of the Universal Century, at least for now, because I do not have the time to devote to it. And, yeah, I have to apologize for this review's lateness just because, well, a lot of just random stuff just came out in my way, but I'm gonna talk about them in another video. So, here's the Moon Gundam in all of its glory, and I have to say, it just looks amazing. Like, there is just an immense amount of detail all over the body. Well, not that immense as to be real great quality, but it is just pretty detailed all over. And of course, there is a full lower body frame. Well, the upper body, Due to the fact that, uh, yep, this pseudo polycap is in the actual stomach thing, and then the and then there are pseudo polycaps inside of the shoulders, which means this guy yes does not have any polycaps, and well, due to that fact, everything is plastic on plastic, so it is extremely sturdy without being too sturdy. Well, this guy just feels solid, and it just looks pretty good. So I actually like the color scheme. It does not appear purple in the camera as I see it right now, but it does appear purple in person. So yeah, I have to like applaud them for using this kind of more like a subtle purple as a blue and then all the usual leak on them colors because yep, this is Mobile Suit Gundam Moon after all. So this guy has to be the leak on them. Surprising because it is from Neil Zeong. Overall, I do like the color scheme. I do wish these pipes could be gray though, but I think this is just the outer casting of the actual pipe, so the red is actually anime accurate, but there is just not enough gray to expose through the armor gaps, just in this like standing pose. But, well, the color scheme does work pretty well together. And so for stickers, none. This guy has no stickers whatsoever. Oh, how about the eyes, you ask? Well, for you people out there who are not informed yet, the eyes are a plastic piece. Now, this is an extra like eye set that is the exact same eye set for the green eyes. Of course, I did use black on the marker to draw the outline because the entire piece is just the eyes and that's it, so there is no black under it. Although it's kind of a bummer that it doesn't shine under the light, it is still pretty good that this kind of technology is implemented into a high grade. And especially since you can switch out this if you can carefully dismantle the head or when you are just building it up from zero, you can paint this piece, draw the outlines, and give this guy whatever color of eyes and sensors you want because the actual cameras are linked to the uh, actual eye piece. But anyways, even with no stickers, you still have to kind of paint it. As you can see, the head does have some green detailing. I did paint it inside with metallic green gunnel marker. It did turn out to be a little bit too thick, but that can be fixed easily. And then also the red under here, which it just kind of looks stale without them. So I just had to pull out my red gunnel marker and just go into the seams. But anyways, with all that out of the way, this guy does have a lot of panel line options, so... But it does look pretty good just as a straight build. Of course, panel lighting would enhance the look, but for me, as a lazy builder, this is enough. For articulation-wise, no potty caps, so I cannot use the generic speech that I usually use, so the head is on a ball joint and a neck joint. But as it does seem, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or something, the collar, the grey collar piece over here is kind of loose. But anyways, you still have that tr traditional like neck and head joint, just like so. And then the arms are on the pseudo polycap that can ro rotate up, and it's 
it on itself can move a little bit in and out like this and then this armor flap can move the entire arm can move out rotation and a double jointed elbow which gives you this nice 135 nothing fancy too bad and then the waist well mostly bricks but it does do decent crunches front skirts can move separately they tell you to separate them side skirts can move back skirts can move for once and then the legs has this kind of a real great like uh joint so you can see there is an actual track over here so you can actually slide it down to have this kind of a pose a sitting pose or something you can make out of this so it does have real great technology but that means you cannot do the uh, forward and back the funky dance just like all the other high grades can do which is good and bad at the same time and then the legs can go forwards and well I think it's just mine but this hinge doesn't seem to want to stay when I have the wrong grip go back go out all the way rotation at the hip and a double jointed knee with featuring armor separation and you can actually see the pipes inside I didn't think a high grade did this sort of thing like a real grade level armor separation in the legs like it is just fancy to look at without any any like awkward gaps in between the armor and also they didn't even half ass the this stuff that is inside the armor because you can actually see the pipes albeit just detailing but still there's something to look at instead of just ugly mechanical stuff that you don't want to look at and then the thruster, thruster can open up over here and then the feet can move forwards and back really far back a little bit of side to side and but there's no rotation because it's not using a polycap ball joint and then this piece of armor can move and then to the backpack the backpack arms actually have a joint inside the backpack over here so they can rotate in and out rotate up and down and then you can flip out the inner joint that is kind of on a semi ratchet they can move in and out but only up to this extent and then the peg over here can move up and down yes again limited to 90 degrees so all in all the moon gundam's articulation is pretty good and it does look good as well thanks to this armor separation over here but then the waist can use a little bit more of a rotating joint because it is unlike the old kits it is on a ball joint instead of a peg so you can cheat but all in all this has pretty good articulation so for the accessories let's start off with some of the gimmicky stuff first so you have two open hands to recreate the box art pose which I did for the Mid Autumn Festival photo and then you have two holding hands for holding weapons and then you have one trigger finger hand for the beam rifle I didn't bother to separate them once I assembled them together but it is a pretty sturdy trigger finger hand the, tr the trigger finger does actually hook around the trigger pretty nicely it doesn't look out of place and it's just your standard old beam rifle so you can you can just switch out the hands like so and have the moon gundam hold it and then you have the beam tomahawk which is stored in the center of the backpack so what they gave you is a sazabi like pink beam so you can just basically slot the beam into the uh, axe part if I can do it correctly that is and then have this end look like it is a beam saber and then give it to the hand now you do kind of need to take off the hand cover but I like, just wedge it in and then you can have a melee weapon and then the hidden knife the butterfly edges so these you actually need to take them out in order to insert the beams somehow I can get these out there we go let's rush your chance and then you get two sets of these dual mini beams for the butterfly edges 
So what you can do is first of all flip these beam emitters out and then basically slot them in. There we go. And then with both of them facing the same direction, you can use it as a hidden weapon. So there you go. Pretend that you're blocking and when the enemy comes, turn them on and then he, your enemy's dead. Just plain dead. But then, these are also beam boomerangs. So detach them and then have one of the ends facing the opposite and then they become psychomu controlled beam boomerangs that can operate remotely for a very limited amount of time according to the instruction manual. So yep, beam boomerangs do not originate from Gundam Seed. Well, the concept of them, probably, but <laughs> yep, here we go. And then the accessory that gave it its name, the psycho plates. Now they do look kind of good on their own and I do like how Bandai managed to like give these red bits the um, the perfect amount of opa opacity just because in when you look at it from afar you cannot actually see the mechanical pegs and stuff inside but only when you get up close you can see those mechanics inside so it is kind of a good balancing point between completely clear and completely just filled so thanks I thank them for that so to store on the Gundam you can obviously use these backpack arms which do have locks so these strokes on top of the pegs can insert into these like fancy gaps inside the hole so you can basically peg the moon in and just basically have it locked so with these arms you can do a variety of stuff but for the storage one you actually get a custom arm like I did stress the plastic because I was trying to learn how it works but the it doesn't really affect the locks too much so it is all right but too bad this is specialized for the left side of the Gundam I really wish they have a right side just for people that want it but anyways you still have this peg it in it should lock in specific positions and there you go the cycle bits are stored but uh, the orientation is killing me so just let me take it off because this is not a half-ass project this is a full-on detachable project now you can actually detach every single one of these eight cycle bits here you go eight individual cycle bits so these middle ones that have the holes only have this kind of peg but they're located on the top and bottom so you can play around with these pegs if you want and then these that locate on top of these pieces over here have this sliding joint over here that you can slide these pieces into and then also the same peg that is existent on the middle pieces so you can have an infinite amount of like connecting possibilities with the cycle bits but I usually like to just leave them in the moon configuration but that's not all because you can detach the entire thing and then there are holes and pegs on the cycle bits so you can close in these pegs and then combine them in the half so you basically close up the moon so it just makes it just makes it more space efficient but it does concentrate the weight of the moon into one spot so it's less distributed but even then this guy can still stand but of course you're not going to be doing like any dynamic poses with this so Bandai generously gave you an action base 5 now I didn't even bother to build it just because I already have an action base 5 thanks to the double O sky and well I just want, really want to get the kit out of the way not the stand so I will build it when I have time so yep that is it 
So that is all the accessories for the high grade Moon Gundam. For comparisons, now I did see in some comments of the promotional posts of this guy that this guy does look like the Astroth. And this does look like it until I bring in the Astroth Munashimento. Of course, this guy is an asymmetrical Gundam. But when you compare the heads, never mind the V fin, they just don't look that similar anymore. Of course, the Gundam Moon mechanics do still look like something from the Iron Blood Orphans line. Just because their line arts are extremely detailed, and just at first glimpse, you cannot even tell the two universes apart until you have more further knowledge about them. Due to that fact, these guys look pretty good together. And the mobile suit that this guy was developed into, the Sazabi. This guy, no question, just towers over the Moon Gundam. And by analyzing their two designs like in detail, they do look pretty similar. And of course, you do get the long rifle for the Sazabi and the Moon Gundam if you buy the uh, magazine. I really forgot which set magazine is it. I do not really care just because I would not have the chance to just buy that thing. But anyways, so that is going to be the review of the Moon Gundam. What do I think of this kit? Well, it is a bit on the expensive side, but I have to say this guy is just an innovative piece of technology. Of course, thanks to that, this guy's price point just gone high. But, well, no stickers, a detailed inner frame that has armor separation, and never mind that, the accessories look amazing. It doesn't have the generic Gundam loadout, which I like. Of course, some of you guys would do, would uh, disagree with me for the sake of nostalgia, but I do like that this guy doesn't have the like generic Gundam loadout, just because it makes this guy unique among all the Gundams. Because, well, the beam rifle is still generic, but of course, it does have the beam tomahawk, and it also has beam boomerangs. And of course, this gigantic moon that gave it its name. Like, not a lot of Gundams have something on their body that gave it their name. And of course, just this guy's aesthetics look cool, and there are a lot of panel lining options for you guys to go for. And also, this guy just looks amazing, just straight out of the box with a little bit of painting. So I will recommend this kit to everybody out there, especially veterans, because this guy does have a full lower inner frame, as I did mention. But it is it just all depends on how much money you have in your pocket right now, just because this guy did cost me 208 Hong Kong dollars, which is way more expensive than, let's say, the real great GP01 full birdie earn. But I'd say, with the justification of the day of me buying this guy, and just also how awesome this guy just looks, the money is well worth it. Of course, I will regret it because the price will drop in the near future, but I have to say, it is worth my spending. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comments, and also subscribe for more. Gumpler reviews, Gumpler news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the featured channels on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye bye.